You know, there's been so many times in my life where I felt unworthy or unqualified, but God would just do something so cool in the midst of it. And one of those times was when I was a junior at the University of Florida and we we're getting ready to play Tennessee. And I see some of my teammates putting different eye blacks under their eyes and uh, they're putting like their mom's name or their area code under their eyes. And so I start to think, you know, I wonder if I could put something under my eyes that maybe could encourage someone or inspire someone. So I was like, well, God bless. I don't know. And I was like, well, Philippians 4.13. I could do that, you know, I can do all things through Christ strength as me. I was like, that'll be, that'll be good for a football player. So I put it under my eyes. We were blessed to win because it was Tennessee. And um, it really wasn't that big of a deal. After the game, a couple of local newspapers wrote about it, but it wasn't that big of a deal. But I kept wearing it under my eyes every single game. And as probably a lot of you know, Gator fans are very passionate. So four, five, six weeks later, they're selling it at the Gator bookstore, at the Florida library. <laughs> you have thousands of fans showing up to games wearing Philippians 4.13 under their eyes. And I honestly believe half of them don't even know what it means. I had one guy, his name was Phil, come up to me and say, hey, did you wear that under your eyes for me? It's <laughs> like, no, it's a Bible verse. <laughs> what are you talking about? And um, so we get to the SEC championship game at the end of the year and we're getting ready to run out of the tunnel and football is kind of one of those things where it's, you have such tunnel vision. It's just one thing at a time, one thing at a time. And, as I was getting ready to run out of the tunnel, I really felt like God was putting in my heart to change the verse. I was like, really, right now? And, but I realized that if we won, we'd be playing a national championship on one of the biggest stages that I might ever get. And so that would be the right opportunity to change the verse. And so we were blessed to win that game. And six weeks, the next six weeks leading up to the national championship, I was agonizing and really contemplating what verse I was going to go with. And God kept bringing it to my heart and my head, John 3.16, because it's the essence of our Christianity. It's the essence of our hope. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. It's what gives us hope as Christians. So I decided to go with that. And so two days before the, the game, I went up to my parents' hotel room in Miami, Florida. And I was like, Mom, Dad, I've decided to change the verse, and we're going to go with John 3.16. My mom's super sweet and supportive. Oh, that's great, honey. My dad's like, well, have you told Coach Meyer? Because <laughs> he says he just likes his routines, but that dude is so superstitious, it's ridiculous. So he's like, you really need to tell him. So we were right down the street at FAU practicing. We finished our last practice for the national championship. I said, hey, Coach Meyer, can I talk to you for a second? He's like, yeah, how you feeling? Your arm good, leg good, you ready for the game? I was like, yeah, I'm good. Um, you know the verse I wear in my eyes? He's like, yeah, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ, strengthens me. I love it. I was like, well, I'm going to change that verse tomorrow night. What? What are you talking about? You can't change that verse. That verse got us here. Uh, it didn't get us here. So after a couple minutes of explaining it to him, he totally was supportive and understood him. Honestly, after that, I didn't even really think about it. I just went out there and tried to win the championship game. We were blessed to win. And two days later, I was at Ballyhoo Restaurant in Gainesville, Florida with me, my mom, my dad, my aunt, and um, Coach Meyer. And Coach Meyer gets a call. And he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, bye. And I was like, who is that? He said, that was Steve McLean. Here's our PR guy at Florida. I said, what do you have to say? He said, did you know that during that game, 94 million people Googled John 3.16? And honestly, my first thought was, how the heck do 94 million people not know John 3.16? <laughs> Hashtag Sunday school. It's like the first thing you hear, you know? But I was just sitting in Ballyhoo Restaurant, just so humbled at how big the God is that we serve and how he wants to do amazing things in us and through us. And when we just step out and show a little faith or a little courage or we just decide, hey, it's okay to be a little bit different than everybody else, what God can do in our lives. And that game just happened to be in 2009, January 8th. Well, exactly three years later, January 8th, 2012, we just happened to be playing the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I never even thought about John 3.16 one time, so I can't take any credit for it. I just tried to go out there and win a playoff game, and we were blessed to win this crazy playoff game in overtime. And I run in and try to, you know, shower really quick and change because I wanted to go celebrate with my family. So I'm go running to go and do my press conference really quick. And uh, right before I walk into the press conference room, Patrick, our PR guy, jumps in front of me. He says, Timmy, do you realize what happened? I was like, yeah, we just beat the Steelers. We're going to play the Patriots. Like, let me do this. He's like, no, do you realize what happened? I was like, I guess not. He said, Timmy. It's exactly three, three, three years from the night you wore John 3.16 under your eyes. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. 
And he was like, no, you don't realize. During the game, you threw for 316 yards. Your yards per completion were 31.6. Your yards per rush were 3.16. The ratings for the night were 31.6, and the time of possession was 31.06. And during the game, 90 million people Google John 316, and it's the number one trending thing on every platform. I was just standing there in that hallway getting ready to do this press conference thinking that that night was about a football game and it really wasn't because the God that we serve is such a big God and standing in that hallway I knew that it was something so much more because the God that we serve is a God of miracles as we're going to hear today and it's a God that does pretty amazing things in us and through us and I think we just have to be willing to step out and say, here you go, God, I'm going to give you my fish and, and my loaves of bread and watch what he does with it. But the God we serve can do pretty awesome, amazing things.